Good day everyone, Dr. Polaris here. I'd like to start off by thanking everyone who has recently subscribed to my channel. Your appreciation for my stuff really means a lot to me. In today's episode, we will be returning to the Paleocene of Alter Earth, this time focusing on the fossil record of Asia. At the end of the Cretaceous, Asia and North America were connected by a natural land bridge that spanned the gap between the lands that are, in our timeline, known as Russia and Alaska. The presence of this land bridge allowed animals from Asia to enter North America and vice versa. The famous Tyrannosaurus, for example, was descended from Asian Tarbosaurus-like ancestors that outcompeted the smaller North American Tyrannosaurs, such as Gorgosaurus and Daspletosaurus. One of the few examples of the reverse, an American dinosaur recolonizing Asia, was the Ceratopsian Cynoceratops. This animal was a Centrosaurine Ceratopsian, a group otherwise known exclusively from North America. The presence of this continental connection would continue to define the paleofaunas of both Asia and the Americas right up until the end of the Eocene. In the early Paleocene, however, Asian dinosaur faunas were quite different from those across the Pacific. The best case study that points to this Asian regional endemism is the Shanghu Formation in Guangdong, southern China. Dated to the early slash middle Paleocene, 65 to 62 million years ago, rocks from this formation have currently produced six dinosaur genera. It is interesting to note that three of these animals were oviraptorosaurs, all belonging to the classically Asian oviraptorid family. One of these oviraptorids, Quantungosaurus tingai, is known from a fairly complete specimen, missing only some tail vertebrae and portions of the right hind limb and manual digits. Phylogenetic studies have placed Quantungosaurus as a member of a clade containing Banji, Wulatelong, and Tontianlong. The other two genera are known from much poorer remains, but the fossils are diagnostic enough to demonstrate that one, Nanchongraptor lentus, was a close relative of Heiyuania, and the other, Yuolong shanghuensis, direct descendant of Ganjiaosaurus. All of these dinosaurs are of a similar size, roughly two metres long, and must have inhabited different ecological niches. The fact that three distinct lineages of oviraptorids have been found at the same site indicates that these animals were continuing to undergo a significant diversification event at this time. Alongside the oviraptorosaurs, three other dinosaur genera inhabited the Shanghu formation. An Aliorhamine tyrannosaur was present, but it is only represented by a single lower jaw complete with teeth. This dinosaur has not yet been named, and is known as the Shanghu Tyrannosaurid. It is likely that this animal was a descendant of Chanjiaosaurus, or perhaps even just a different species of that genus. A potential prey item for the Tyrannosaur was an 8 metre Lambiosaurian Hadrosaurid, known as Culturalophosaurus nanchongai. This Hadrosaur possessed a distinctive blade shaped head crest, similar to that of its close relative Olorititon. Multiple specimens of this dinosaur have been found in close proximity, suggesting a potential herding behaviour. The final member of this early Paleocene assemblage was the advanced troodontid Minjae raptor Aquidens, known from a partial skull, teeth, tail vertebrae and partial hind limb elements. Like its close cousins, Xanabazar and Sauronithoides, Minjae raptor was a fast, agile predator that hunted small prey with its sharp teeth and curved claws. It is interesting to note that all of these animals are of Cretaceous Asian origins, with no taxa derived from North American ancestors. However, as the Paleocene progressed, faunal connections with North America would become increasingly apparent. Indeed, if we compare the animals of the early Paleocene Shanghu formation with those of the late Paleocene Turpan Basin, 58 to 55 million years ago, many differences present themselves. The latter fossil site, located in the harsh, blistering desert of northeastern China, has only recently been excavated by paleontologists. The dinosaurs that have been uncovered here are of a very mixed character. In all, of the eight genera uncovered at the Turpan Basin, 
four were Chinese endemics, and four were North American immigrants. There were two Ceratopsians present, both of them members of the advanced family Ceratopsidae. One, known as Mongolosaurus neoregionis, was a large chasmosaurine closely related to the North American members of Triceratopsini. As its genus name suggests, this animal was first discovered in late Paleocene fossil beds in Mongolia, where its remains were quite common. Mongolosaurus was a bulky ceratopsian, approximately the same size as Triceratops, at 9 metres long and 6 tonnes in mass. The holotype of M. neoregionis consisted of a partial skull, lower jaw, vertebral column, shoulder girdle and pelvis. The other ceratopsian was, rather interestingly, a descendant of the late Cretaceous centrosaurine Cynoceratops. Xeroceratops taclacomani was smaller than Mongolosaurus, at 6 metres in length and about 2 tonnes in weight. It possessed a single straight nasal horn and curved forward-pointing hornlets on its bony frill. These details were gleaned from the only remains of this animal discovered so far, a single partial but well-preserved skull. The coexistence of these two ceratopsians would be a precursor to the blossoming of this dinosaur family in the following Eocene period. Hadrosaurs were also present at the Turpan Basin site. The largest and most impressive of these was the massive Lambiosaurine, Huijangia zhengai. A close relative of Charonosaurus and Parasaurolophus, only larger at 13 metres long, was the largest animal in late Paleocene Asia. Sharing the environment with this titan were two smaller hadrosaurs, both of North American origin. Chinjangosaurus remotus, an 8 metre Edmontosaurine and sister taxon of Telmatohadros from contemporary North Dakota, was the most common large herbivore in the region. Another American immigrant, Cinerinus desertus, a critosaurine, has recently been discovered in the north of the basin. In recent phylogenetic studies, Cinerinus has been classified as a basal critosaurine, indeed perhaps the most basal. If so, this would indicate a long ghost lineage leading back to the Campanian. Among the oviraptorosaurs found in the Turpan Basin, the large and herbivorous Chimo Long Ossifragus stood out from the crowd, quite literally, by being the only Canaanathid present. It also towered above its oviraptorid contemporaries, standing approximately 1.8 metres tall and measuring 5.5 metres from beak to tail tip. Upon its initial discovery, this animal was only known from a few skull fragments. As these were unusually massive and heavily built, Chi Mo Long was interpreted as a bone-crushing predator slash scavenger, hence the species name. However, a newly published paper has challenged this, comparing the heavy beak of Q. ossifragus to those of the extinct dromornithid birds from Australia from our world. Also, the recent discovery of hind limb elements indicates that this genus was not a cursorial animal in the slightest further suggesting a herbivorous diet consisting of tough vegetation and or seeds and nuts. Another interesting debate surrounding this animal concerns its relationships. It is clearly a member of Canaanathidae, but Chi Mo Long is so different from other members of its family that it is proven almost impossible to classify. This is not helped by the fact that no transitional forms have as yet been discovered in older rocks, that show a link between this animal and more typical oviraptorosaurs. As such, Chimo Long's ancestors may have migrated to China via the Bering Land Bridge, but this will remain mere speculation until fossil finds are discovered. Alongside this unusual giant lived the far more typical Bachusaurus simus, a two metre long oviraptorid closely related to Conchoraptor. At the very top of the food chain in the Turpan Basin was the widespread Tyrannosaur Sarcovonator sinensis, an Asian representative of the North American Sarcovonator genus. A truly massive animal that rivalled T. rex in size and strength, S. sinensis would have preyed on the large hadrosaurs and ceratopsians that shared its environment. Elsewhere in China, 
Many other noteworthy Paleocene dinosaurs have been uncovered from the country's numerous fossil-bearing rocks. The common dromaeosaur Boreoraptor has been found in the late Paleocene Chijang Basin sites, alongside a smaller Velociraptorian, Jang Chialestes minor. The presence of Boreoraptor in Asia, North America and Europe indicates just how successful this genus really was, and helped pave the way for a radiation of large, predatory dromaeosaurs later in the Eocene. Several genera of pachycephalosaurs have also been found across China, including two, Ornatotholus and Aculeosaurus, closely related to the North American Pachycephalosaurus. However, these two genres share many features of their heavily ornamented skulls with Pachycephalosaurus juveniles. No dome-headed specimens have been found at any of the sites where Ornatotholus and Aculeosaurus have been discovered, indicating that these dinosaurs were adults that retained pedomorphic traits. A possible North American relative, Enigmacephaly spinifer, has been found in late Paleocene deposits, but the affinities of this animal are currently under debate. More uniquely Asian Paleocene dinosaurs include a number of curiously small basal forms. These include a relative of the diminutive Oviraptorosaur avimimus from the Domu formation 60 to 58 million years ago that has yet to be named, the tiny Alverosaur Leptocursor singularis, the only Alverosaur known from the northern continents during the Paleocene, and a small, very basal Pachycephalosaur from Inner Mongolia, Megnosaurus nomogeni. Both the Avimimus relative and Megnosaurus, while rare and marginal in their own time, would go on to produce many successful lineages later in the Cenozoic. However, Perhaps the most bizarre and unexpected member of the Paleocene Asian faunal assemblage was the basal ceratopsian Plenoceratops mirabilis. Known from a single fragmentary specimen discovered at the Tu Jin Shan formation, this little animal was remarkably primitive. Indeed, phylogenetic analysis has revealed Plenoceratops to be among the most basal members of its family grouping closely with the late Jurassic Yin Long and Chao Yang Saurus. This would seem to imply a very long ghost lineage for this animal. However, the late Cretaceous dinosaur Micropachycephalosaurus, also known from China, has been identified as a basal ceratopsian. If this connection proves right, it would significantly shorten the gap in the fossil record between Plenoceratops and a close relative. This would still leave a ghost lineage spanning 81 million years between Yin Long and Micropachycephalosaurus, and it is not even certain if the latter was a particularly close relative to P. mirabilis. For now, Plenoceratops makes for an interesting and rather adorable enigma. Other dinosaur groups were present as well, but their remains have yet to be described in detail. We know that Leptoceratopsians and Ornithomimosaurs dwelt in Paleocene Asia, but, given the relatively rudimentary state of alter-Earth paleontology, fossils belonging to these groups sit in storerooms awaiting further study. Thank you for listening, everyone. Next week I'll be covering the Paleocene of Europe, which was a very strange and unique place indeed. On a side note, if there are any prehistoric survivor cryptids from the Congo that you would like me to cover in future, leave a comment below. I will cover the cryptid that gets the most mentions in a couple of weeks. Thanks again, and see you again soon. Cheerio!